India is the second most populated nation in the world, at 1.4 billion inhabitants, and it is set to pass China in just a few years. In this series, we are taking a look at the remarkable development that has taken place in India in the last few decades, and why the massive nation might be the next powerhouse in the global economy. In these first two parts of the series, we are focusing on population and geography, visualizing the 28 states and the eight union territories of India. India was set to census the population in 2021, but with the global pandemic, it has been postponed to 2022. The last one was conducted in 2011, and with such a massive nation without a perfect national registration, the numbers always come with a degree of uncertainty. Starting in the north, we have the disputed regions in the Kashmir area, where India, Pakistan and China have conflicting claims. Here, we will talk about the areas that are de facto under Indian control as of now, and use the Indian definitions of those areas. The Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir, and the separately administered Ladakh, is basically divided by religious borders, with Jammu being dominated by Hindus, Kashmir being dominated by Muslims, and Ladakh being dominated by Buddhists. The area is defined by the Himalayan mountain range, and is hence mostly at high altitude. Ladakh is almost exclusively located over 3,000 meters above sea level, and the 1,200 people living in the village of Kursuk is living in the highest settlement in India. In Kashmir and Jammu, around 15 million people live, and the area has experienced faster population growth than the Indian average during the last few decades. The Ladakh territory is sparsely populated at around 300,000 inhabitants. Kashmiri is the dominating language here, being the mother tongue for half of the population. Moving south, we enter the non-disputed Himachal Pradesh, still located in the Himalayas and bordering Tibet of China. The melting water rivers from the mountains feed the agriculture, which is dominated by wheat, maize, rice and barley. Home to 7.5 million people, the state has seen large progress in recent years. An extended grid of hydroelectric power plants bring income by exporting to neighboring states. The mountainous region also helped bring in tourism incomes. Hindi is used as the lingua franca in Himachal Pradesh, alongside a large selection of smaller languages. Hinduism dominates with 95% of the population. To the west we find more populated Punjab, with 30 million inhabitants. Bordering Pakistan to the west, it is part of a larger area with the same name, stretching over both modern Pakistan and India. Home to large swaths of arable land, the agriculture in the state is extensive, with wheat, rice and sugar canes being stable crops that are exported to other Indian states. In the southwest, Punjab touches the Thar Desert. Punjabi is the dominating language with 90% of the population, and close to 60% of the population are followers of Sikhism followed by Hinduism at close to 40%. Haryana is home to close to 30 million people and borders Punjab in the west and the capital region of Delhi to the east, where the epicenter of the state's economy is located. The state is dominated by Hindus at 87%, followed by Muslims at 7%. Hindi is the largest language at 48%, followed by Haryanvi at 37%, and Punjabi at 7%. Haryana has a diverse economy, with service industries, manufacturing and agriculture all making sizable contributions to the overall economic output. Located between the two previously mentioned states Punjab and Haryana is the city of Chandigarh, a separate union territory that serves as the joint capital of them both. The city was planned and built from nothing in the early 1950s, short after the independence of Pakistan that put Lahore, previously the capital of the undivided Punjab region, in Pakistan. Today, Chandigarh has a population of 1.1 million. 
and we finished the northern region with the national capital territory of Delhi, home to the capital of India as a whole, New Delhi. The geographically small area is home to 19.5 million people. With the surrounding national capital region, it is one of the largest urban agglomerations in the world. Delhi sees daily high temperatures in the summer months in the 40s, and an arguably more comfortable 20s in the winter. It sees its share of the monsoon rain in the summer, but nothing close to other parts of India. Delhi is infamous for its smog problems, that is causing thousands of deaths every year. Even though many efforts have been put in place in recent years, it remains a problem. The service sector dominates the large economy of the Indian capital. Hinduism dominates with 81% of the population, ahead of Islam at 12%. Hindi is the first language for 80% of the population. Moving on to the northeast, we have eight states, all relatively small in area, and with a distinct cultural and historical difference from the rest of India, bordering Myanmar and Bangladesh to the south, and China and Bhutan to the north. These states were incorporated in the British crown rule in the late 1800s, early 1900s, often called the Seven Sisters, despite being eight nowadays. The by far most populated of these states is Assam, with 36 million inhabitants, bordering six out of the other seven states in the region. With Himalayan mountains in the north, the central and southern parts are more arable, and the tea production is alongside drilling for oil, driving the economy. The region's wildlife also brings tourists to the area. Border disputes exist with several neighboring states, and violent separatist groups have been active in the area. But even though skirmishes still blossom occasionally, it is generally peaceful nowadays. 60% of the population is Hindu and 35% Muslim. Assamese is the most common language for half of the population, followed by Bengali at just under 30%. The most northeastern point of India is found in the state of Arunachal Pradesh, home to 1.7 million people. Most of the state is claimed by China as part of South Tibet and was subject of war in the 1960s. Still today, it is reason for hostility between the two nations. The state is, to a large part, located in the Himalayas, with its highest peak above 7,000 meters. It has a mixed picture when it comes to religion, with Christianity, Hinduism and the indigenous religions all having between 25 and 30 percent. The languages are even more divided, with Nyishi being the largest at 20 percent, followed by Adi at 17 percent, Bengali at 6 percent, and an additional 30 to 50 smaller languages. Going south, we find Nagaland, home to 2 million people and bordering Myanmar to the east. The economy here is based on agriculture and the economic development has been hindered by a history of conflicts in the area. This area is home to the Naga people, with a large assortment of languages and dialects, none of which is mother tongue for more than 12% of the population. English and Nagamese is common to use as a second language for communication between tribes. The vast majority of the population is Christian. South of Nagaland we find Manipur, home to 3.5 million people, bordering Myanmar to the east. In many ways the state share a history with its northern neighbor. And it is also a mainly rural agricultural state with a history of conflicts. Meitei is the dominating language here, and Hinduism is only slightly bigger than Christianity, with 40% each. Mizoram is the southernmost state in this region and inhabits 1.3 million people. It borders Bangladesh and Myanmar and is mainly forested. Mizoram is home to many indigenous populations, with Mizu being the dominating language. 87% of the population follows Christianity. To the west of Mizoram we find Tripura, almost completely surrounded by Bangladesh. 4.2 million people live here, and being almost cut off from the rest of India, development and infrastructure has suffered. Bangladesh is an important partner both in official and unofficial international trade over the border. 
the Bengali language dominates the Tripura state, with 63% of the people having it as their first language. Tripuri is the second most common with 25%. 83% of the population is Hindu. Meghalaya is home to 3.8 million people and borders Assam state to the north and Bangladesh to the south. 70% of the area is forested and it is the state that sees the most rain in a year and therefore the wettest place on earth. Agriculture dominates the economy alongside service industries and trade with Bangladesh is significant. Christianity dominates here with Kasi and Garo being the two largest languages. The northeastern states of India is nearly cut off from the rest of the country, with the exception of the so-called Siliguri Corridor in West Bengal, which we will talk about in a little while. Just north of this is the most recent state in the region, Sikkim, with borders to China, Bhutan and Nepal. The Natula Pass, opened in 2006, has improved trade with China, but political tensions and the coronavirus has halted the development and closed the border crossing. Here we find the tallest mountain in India, Kanchenjunga, the third highest peak in the world at 8,586 meters. Only 660,000 people live in this state, which is the least populated, excluding some of the smaller union territories. Agriculture and tourism dominate the economy. Nepali is the most common language and Hindus account for 57% of the population and Buddhism 27%. The central region of India is made up of four states, from the Nepalese border in the north to the geographical center point of India. Starting in Uttarakhand, located partly in the Himalayas, bordering China and Nepal, the state is home to 11.8 million people. Hindi dominates, but a sizable share of the population has Garhwali or Kumaoni as their first language. 83% of the population follows Hinduism, followed by Islam at 14%. The agriculture is dominated by rice, wheat and soybeans, and tourism and hydropower also bring revenue to the state. To the south we find Uttar Pradesh, the most inhabited subdivision of any nation in the world, with its 234 million inhabitants. More populous than all but four nations in the world, it is home to several large cities, including the state capital Lucknow. The city of Varanasi is also located here, one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, dating several millenniums back. The state is able to feed its large population with its extensive arable land, covering 82% of the surface. Bordering Nepal to the north and capital Delhi to the west, Uttar Pradesh has not been able to keep up with the development in some states further south. Despite having a large economy, the GDP per capita is lower than in many other states, and poverty is still present in parts of the population. 80% of the population are Hindus and 19% Muslims. Hindi is the first language for 80%, with Bhojpuri in second with 11%. The most important cash crop in the region is sugarcane, while wheat is mostly grown for the local population. The proximity to Delhi also brings more high-tech industries to the area, which has helped the economy grow in recent years. Right in the center of India, Madhya Pradesh is populated by 86 million people. Like its northern neighbors, it is not in the top when it comes to human development index and similar measures, but the growth has sped up in recent years. Hindi is dominating, followed by a range of smaller languages. Hinduism accounts for 90% of the population. Wheat, soybeans and gram dominate the agriculture output, and the state also holds large reserves of diamond and copper. The final state in the central region is Chhattisgarh, to the east, with close to 33 million inhabitants. The city's forests cover a large part of this state that is dominated by hilly parts to the north and south, with more arable land in the center. The state is still 80% rural, and the agriculture is an important source of revenue, despite being a region with limited natural irrigation sources. This mainly hinders the rice cultivation, that despite that, dominate the food production. Close to the entire population follows Hinduism, while the languages are more diverse. Still, Chhattisgarhi is the mother tongue for 60% of the inhabitants. Sales of alcohol is famously forbidden here, giving reason for some trips to nearby Union territories. And before ending part 1, we will add the 80 million inhabitants of Rajasthan in the northern region. This is India's largest state by area at 342,000 square kilometers. Rajasthan has a long border with Pakistan and is home to the inhospitable Tar Desert, 
the state has invested greatly in renewable energy and is home to the Badla Solar Park, the largest in the world. Hinduism dominates here with 88% of the population, and Rajasthani and Hindi are the two major languages spoken. In part two of this series, we will look at the eastern, western and southern regions of India and look more specifically at the largest cities. You can become a member on my channel and support me further if you wish to. Just press the join button down below. Thank you so much for watching.